I want you to raise your hand if you've ever gotten mad while playing Smash before. My guess is that most people watching this video at least thought about raising their hand, and that's totally fine. Personally, I never got mad playing Smash until I picked up Ultimate. But then again, I never played competitively until I picked up Ultimate. Even when I first started playing online, all I wanted to do was have fun doing free-for-alls in the Anything Goes Battle Arenas. Yeah, that was back when the Anything Goes Battle Arenas actually existed. Eventually though, even in free-for-alls, I'd run into a couple of people who took this game more seriously than anyone else in the lobby. Pretty soon, the lobby was full of them, and I wasn't having fun because I was always getting my butt kicked within the first minute. So I decided to stop doing battle arenas and start doing quick play, because supposedly that would match me up against people close to my skill level. Unfortunately, most people who do quick play aren't there for free-for-alls, which meant that most of the time, I was doing 1v1s. That was when I officially stopped having fun playing Smash. Checked in at 240. Though so they make the move and look at Ethier. Get it out, son. Get back on stage, but not like on the platform. I think he was trying to get like on the ledge oh, or something. Oh, like off, off stage. Yeah, he looks pretty upset. Yeah. Jung Ho showing some emotion in the dugout. Oh, oh wow. wow! With the reversal forward. Razix the frustration. Taking it out on the Orioles bench there. To 3 nothing and Trevor Bauer not very happy when he returned to the... ...on the pond, you know, But uh, no... Oh, that was... That was enough for him, uh, King Bupa. I don't think that phone's gonna work anymore. Now, you might think I threw all those clips in for you to laugh at, but that's not my point at all. There's a major double standard when it comes to the difference between esports and traditional sports, and people who go into one side don't typically see what happens in the other. If a player in a traditional sport doesn't play at the level they expect of themselves, you'll see scenes like this. It's normal, it's human, and nobody bats an eyelash. However, the second a competitive video game player so much as throws a controller on the floor, suddenly they're a crybaby, they're salty, they're a child throwing a tantrum. This is the mindset that you cannot have. It's a total lack of empathy, and it'll just make you feel worse about your own self when you start getting mad after a match is over. The reason I only chose to show baseball clips in the earlier segment is for two reasons. First of all, it's a lot easier to find baseball players throwing their helmets in a dugout than NFL players throwing their helmets on the sideline. The second is that in baseball, while yes, it is a team sport, most of the game is one-on-one. -on -one, pitcher against batter. If you strike out, it isn't because someone on your team figuratively dropped the ball. You just missed. And when you know you have no one to blame but yourself, that's when it hurts the most. These are the top players in North America, sometimes even the world. Yet even they get upset when they don't play well. Even their million dollar paychecks don't cushion the pain. So, what's my point? The first thing I want to make clear is that in order to have a proper mentality when it comes to Smash, you need to have the right mentality when it comes to human nature. You're going to get mad sometimes. Other people are going to get mad sometimes. If you see someone slamming their controller on the floor or yelling in frustration, they're not acting like children, they're acting like people. They take their craft seriously. They're allowing themselves to be vulnerable by putting themselves in highly competitive situations. And they're upset when all that hard work doesn't pay off. Second, you need to acknowledge that you're going to have days like this too. You may see a variety of people who either lose in the finals or who don't even make it to the top 64 and still manage to keep their composure. You can't say, see, this person didn't lose their cool, so there's no excuse. This is a different person on a different day in a different circumstance, comparing yourself, or worse, someone else, to another person who manages to keep their cool after losing is both illogical and immature. Let's go back to those baseball players from earlier. Do you think they have meltdowns like this every single game? No. Most of the time, they manage to hold it in, say good game when it's over, and then go back to training so that it doesn't happen again. But even the greatest athletes lose their temper from time to time. 
Okay, I'm pretty sure you get it by now. It's okay to get angry so long as you're not a bad sport about it. And the occasional outburst doesn't automatically qualify as being a bad sport. Does that mean you should just let yourself be angry and forget about basic coping mechanisms? Of course not. Now that you understand that anger is inevitable and you aren't judging people when they get salty, it's time we actually work on keeping you as calm as possible. When you're stressed, you're activating your sympathetic nervous system, which is moving blood from your brain to your fists. We want to keep that emotion at bay as much as we can, because if you're getting tilted, you're not thinking properly. We want to shift that blood back to your brain, so anytime you feel yourself getting mad, try to keep a good distance from your opponent for a minute and start to take deep breaths. If you just lost a stock, don't go back onto stage immediately. Close your eyes and breathe in deep through your nose. Your heart is probably beating like crazy right now, so you need as much oxygen as you can get. This will activate your parasympathetic nervous system, which will work on calming you down so you can go back to analyzing the match. Oh great, is this going to turn into one of those meditation spiels again? No, although I definitely still think you should experiment with it and see if it works for you. My next point is that you should be realistic about your goals. Am I saying that you shouldn't strive to be a top player? Yes. No, but seriously, I absolutely believe that you should strive to be the best version of yourself that you can be, but it's also important to realize just how strong your competition is. If you've never even won a local tournament, how do you ever expect to be a top 50 player? I once asked a top player when it was that he decided to become a top player, and his response was that he decided that he could become a top player only after he was already beating other top players. Up until that point, he was just having fun playing a video game. And I think that that should be your motivation too. It's called a growth mindset. That no matter where you are right now, you can always get better. Your goal should be improvement more so than results. Because if you focus on the results, what do you think is going to happen when you lose? Am I saying that you should abandon your goals? No. But I am telling you that if your goals are pie in the sky like being the best Marth player in the world, you should probably scale them back to more manageable goals at least for the time being. For instance, depending on your skill level, maybe your first goal should be to practice every day. You can do this in training mode, online, or even against CPUs. Once you're playing every day, you can start practicing combos that you want to get on real people. First, go into training mode and practice on a CPU, then on a CPU that moves, and then you can start practicing on real people. Did you notice anything about what I've mentioned so far? These are growth goals, not results goals. You have limited control over whether or not you win your next five games but you have total control over whether you decide to pick up your controller and start playing or not. Now, I'm pretty sure those goals don't sound as fun as being the best player in the world with your character, so are there any goals that's somewhere down the middle in terms of loftiness and fun? Sure, let's do that. Let's say that your overarching goal is to be the best Marth player in the world. Well, obviously that's way out of your reach if you can't even get into Elite Smash, so maybe you could try doing that. Again, this is a results-oriented goal, so it should really be thought of as a benchmark for you to achieve someday, not tomorrow. Once you've made it into Elite Smash, your next goal should be to stay there. Keep practicing until you not only get into Elite Smash, but never have to worry about whether or not you'll fall out again. You may go from Elite Smash and fall back down to 4 million GSP. That doesn't make you a failure. It's just how it goes sometimes. Which is why I don't want you to focus on the results. Focus on having fun in the process, and let the benchmarks happen whenever they happen. So now you're doing pretty well online, but you don't want to be a GSP fiend forever. You want to be known, so it's time to go to tournaments. Don't be afraid of going 0-2 for a while, especially if you live in a competitive area. Eventually though, if you keep at it and stay focused, you'll start winning some games. Maybe you'll even make it into winner semis. Then you keep improving until you make it to grand finals, then you start to win! Suddenly, you're in your local power rankings, but you don't want to stop there. Now it's time to move on to major tournaments. Again, sometimes you'll drown in pools, but that's okay, because by now, you're not as focused on the results. You're there for the experience. And just like before, you'll eventually make it past pools and into the winner's bracket, and sometimes you won't. One last thing that I want to emphasize though, is that you shouldn't rush. How long do you think MKLeo has been playing this game? How long do you think Tweak has been playing? 
What about Cosmos and Light and Mars and DeBuzz? Do you think they picked up this game yesterday? They've been playing in major tournaments for years! Yet here you are, thinking you can be the best in the world one day when you can't even make it into Elite Smash. You know what though? That's okay. Because even the best of the best got their start somewhere. I just don't want your goals to discourage you if you're not at that level yet. Take your time. Heck, Melee is still going. And whether or not a new Smash game comes out in the next couple years, Smash tournaments are going to be here for the foreseeable future. Don't think that you need to rush. Enjoy the game, because that's what all the greats did to get to where they are now. So, what do you think? What are your goals as a Smash player? What are your tips for a good Smash mentality? Leave a comment to let me know, and I'll see you guys next time.